In this video I'm going to show you how to check for brake pad wear on a 2009 Kawasaki KLR650. Uh, it's a little difficult to see the pads with the caliper on the bike so uh, what I'm going to do just for the sake of, of the video is uh, remove the caliper and remove the pads and, and show you uh, the pad thickness that way. Um, to do that I need to remove these uh, caliper pins, uh, the two caliper mounting bolts and this uh, brake hose guide. Uh, to start off, I'm just going to loosen up these caliper pins to make it easier to get out later. Then I need to um, remove this brake hose guide. And with that out of the way, I can remove the caliper mounting bolts. And when you're doing this, hold on to your caliper um, when you're removing this last bolt because you don't want this caliper to hang uh, or fall and hang from this hose because you can damage your brake hose. With the caliper off, I can, I can remove these brake pad pins. Well, they're kind of difficult to get in because there's a spring uh, actually pressing against these pads which presses against these pins so just kind of grab it and pull it out pull the second one out and with these out of the way I can take the pads and uh, remove them Kawasaki uh, recommends that the brake pads uh, should never be thinner than uh, 40 thousandths of an inch and that measurement is from the edge of this middle backing plate to the uh, surface of the brake pad so that distance should be never be less than 40 thousandths of an inch. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, the dime thickness is about 50 thousandths of an inch so if you check the pads while, while the, the caliper is on the bike you can you can you know put a dime up next to it and, and get a general idea of uh, pad wear. Uh, there's on these brake pads. There's a uh, wear indicator groove. Um, this is the wear indicator groove. Um, the, at the bottom of this wear in in indicator groove, to the edge of this uh, backing plate, um, is about forty thousandths of an inch. So if you you take the brake pads off and, and you don't see this wear indicator groove, if, if it's worn away, then then it's time to re replace the uh, brake pads. I think it's impossible to see this um, wear indicator groove while the, the caliper is attached to the bike so you need to uh, take the caliper off to even see it. Um, the more exact way of measuring this is to take a, a set of calipers. Um, I think a battery's going out on mine so it blinks but uh, you can take the end here you know open it up which extends this little piece here and you can kind of rest it against the backing plate and press down and get an, an idea what the, the pad thickness is. On this one it's 180 thousandths of an inch. So I'm, I'm, I've got plenty of time to go before these pads need to be um, replaced. Also, um, another thing that you should look for when you're inspecting the brake pads is uh, the surface of this brake pad uh, should be parallel with the, uh, this backing plate. Um, if it's not, if it's at an angle uh, what's probably happening, happening is are these um, these brake pad pins are corroded, and these pads are unable to slide across the uh, brake pad pin. And when that happens, it can it can also cause excessive wear, um, uneven and excessive wear on your brake pads. Also, the uh, the minimum wear uh, forty thousandths of an inch for the rear brake pads is also true for the front brake brake pads. Um, the only difference is when you get new new front brake pads, uh, they're they're slightly th uh, less thick than the rear. The rear are a little thicker than the front, um, but the minimum minimum wear of forty thousandths is true for, for both the front and, and rear brakes. Now I can reinstall my uh, brake pads. Um, here's that spring kind of leaf spring thing I was talking about earlier. 
kind of keeps pressure on these pads so they don't uh, get a high frequency vibration and cause them to squeak. Um, I can insert the inner pad. What I like to do is um, then I can insert my uh, pads, pad pins and with just one pad installed I can, it's more easy to get the pin through the pad. And I can insert the other one and then I can install my second pad because it's spring loaded I have to kind of hold it down to align the hole to these pins then I can start the start to screw in these pad pins I'm not going to tighten them all the way until I have them on the, have the caliper attached to the bike Then make sure that there's they're separated, so I can uh, fit the caliper uh, onto the the disc brake or the disc. With my pads reinstalled in the caliper, I can slip my uh, disc brake disc into the in between the calipers, slide that on, reinstall my mounting bolts. Uh, these should be tightened, the rear mounting bolt should be tightened to 18 foot-pounds. Just give me a sec, I need to readjust this. Um, with those reinstalled, uh, I can reinstall the uh, hose guide. And then um, I can uh, tighten up these uh, brake pad pins. Uh, they should be tightened to 12.5 foot pounds. That's all there is to check in your uh, brake pads for wear. Um, if you have any questions, just leave a leave a question in the comment section or uh, send me a message, and I'll uh, do my best to answer it. And I hope you found this video helpful. And thank you for watching.